How's everyone this afternoon? We can do a little bit better than that. How's everyone this afternoon? All right, so listen, I am a college president, so I don't believe in lecturing to dead audiences. All right, so I just want to make sure we understand that. Uh, listen, I am thrilled to be here. My students, however, are not as thrilled to have me here. You see, I use TED Talks in my classes. So my students now are worried that I'm going to assign this TED Talk to some of our lesson plans, and I absolutely am, okay? <laughs> no question about it. You know, you check, when you're giving a TED Talk, you check to see all of the most viewed sites and things like that, and I gotta be honest with you, it'd be terrible to give a TED Talk that no one watched. So, we are here today to talk about the state of higher education. I am the president of Paul Quinn College. It's a four-year college in the southern sector of Dallas, and it's a little bit different than maybe your version of higher education. We are not the folks that sit around and have cocktail parties and debate all types of, uh, I don't want to offend anyone here because you might have gone to some of those schools. So we'll just say that what we do is we engage. Right? We engage in the communities that we serve. And we think that's important. So for a moment, I'd like to have everyone here sort of close their eyes and you're going to take a walk with me. Now, listen, guys, I'm looking at you. I know who closed their eyes and who didn't close their eyes, all right? I want you to imagine that you are the president of a school like Paul Quinn College. If you are the president of a school like Paul Quinn College, 90% of your students would be Pell Grant eligible. Now, you might not know what that means. You may understand what it means that they're from low-income backgrounds, but let me explain to you what it means to be Pell Grant eligible. It means that you can't afford glasses when you need them. One year, 15% of our student body didn't have the glasses that they needed. So we got on Twitter, we got on Facebook, we sent out emails, and in 10 days we raised $5,000, and all the students in our college that needed glasses got them. When you are president of a school like Paul Quinn College and 90% of your students are Pell Grant eligible, that means that you get text messages like the one I got last night for one of my students who had a death in his family in Chicago but can't afford to get home. So you buy them bus tickets because that's what you do when you're the president of a school like Paul Quinn College. When you are the president of a school like Paul Quinn College, the average ACT score of your student body is a 17. The average SAT score is 830. Now, experts tell us that to be college ready, your ACT score needs to be 21 and your SAT score needs to be 990, all right? But does that mean you give up on these students? Does that mean that they aren't capable of learning? I don't think so. When you're the president of a school like Paul Quinn College, you are in a community that is underserved. We are a historically black college. One of the odd facts of life as a historically black college is you are always in poor black neighborhoods. I'm not quite sure how all 105 of us wound up that way. Some random occurrence, I'm sure, right? So we're in a community where 98.9% .9 of the people in our community are minorities. The average family income is $23,529. $23,000 a year. There's roughly 4,400 people that live in that community. And there are no grocery stores. Almost 5,000 people. 98.9% .9 minorities, and the average family income is $23,000 a year. Do those folks not eat? Do they not deserve to eat? So we decided to do something about that. Because when you're the president of Paul Quinn College, or a school like Paul Quinn College, you realize the time has come for you to stop listening to people talk about what can't be done and to start doing something. So we turned our football field into a farm, two-acre organic farm. Now, I get it. I get it. We're in Texas. I know. 
All right, football is king. People in preschool start holding their sons back so they'll be ready for spring football practice in first grade. So I got it, okay? And everyone says to me, how did you do that? It's so brave, it's so courageous. Listen, I didn't cut football at the University of Texas, right? We weren't playing in BCS championship games. We weren't on TV. We didn't have a television contract. We were terrible, right? We lost every game. It was not a good look. But more importantly, more importantly, we decided that we were going to believe in a new field of dreams. If you can't eat, you can't tackle, right? How self-serving do you have to be for six days a year for people to come to your football field and watch a game and people in your community are hungry? Because in that community, there are no grocery stores. It's 100% leakage in our census tract. 100%. There are no grocery stores. Now, there are convenience stores attached to gas stations, but when was the last time any of you brought your fruits and vegetables from the convenience store attached to the gas station? You haven't, and that's the point. That's the absolute point. Why should people live that way? There's no Starbucks in our community. There are no stores. If you want to buy something, you go to the pawn shop. You can get a great deal. Might be slightly used, but it's still a great deal. That's not right. It's not right. There are no banks. If you want to cash a check or do a financial transaction, you go to a check cashing place. They will charge you a low, low discount rate of 50% on whatever you charge. And I'm being a little facetious. It's really like 40%, OK? But the point is, people shouldn't live that way. So we decided to do something about that. We thought we were by ourselves, though. And then we started doing some research. Here's what we found. 23 million people in America live every day with food insecurity. They live in food deserts. 23 million Americans. 1.7 million new students every year are taking remedial courses in college. 1.7 million freshmen take at least one remedial course in college. There are 1,153 urban colleges in America. They all deal with the same basic issues in the communities they serve. Food deserts, underprepared students, and opportunities. So we started thinking, maybe it's time for a new urban college model. And maybe Paul Quinn College should be that model. So here's what we did. Our mission, our mission statement, what we stand for is servant leadership. It is we over me. The needs of the community outweigh the wants of the individual. You don't get to be selfish at Paul Quinn College. We submit that you should never get to be selfish anywhere because selfish people destroy the fabric of community. So at our school, we taught our students in the three E's of servant leadership, ethical leadership, educational leadership, and economic leadership. Because if you can't fund your dream, you don't have a dream. You have the dream that the funders told you to have. So you better start dealing with the economic realities of your situation. So we started teaching our students that. So we started with we over me. From there, we decided to invest in entrepreneurship and innovation. And there's a quote, nothing has more strength than dire necessity. Listen, you will get super creative when you have no food. All right? Now, we are thankful to PepsiCo. We are thankful to Trammell S. Crow. And we are incredibly thankful to Yale Sustainable Food Project because they all worked with us to create the farm. Right? And the farm has grown over 20,000 food, I'm sorry, 20,000 pounds of food in the last three years. We give away 10% of what we grow. We call it tithing to the community because we are faith-based school after all. And we also sell food to area restaurants. How many of you have eaten in places like Hibiscus? Okay, thank you. I knew somebody ate at Hibiscus, okay. Balsa, have you eaten at Balsa? Okay, here's one for you. Have you been to a Dallas Cowboys game? Oh, I know they're having a bad year, but you can be honest, okay? <laughs> All right. Those are our customers. The Dallas Cowboys are our largest customer, and we are proud of that, right? But it's about entrepreneurship and innovation. We decided that we would start teaching our students to be entrepreneurs. We don't want them looking for jobs. We want them creating jobs. Because if you are from under-resourced communities, someone's going to figure out how to make money providing needs to those communities. Why shouldn't it be the people from those communities? Why shouldn't our college teach their students that way? Entrepreneurship. That's the second leg of the new urban college model. The first leg was we over me, servant leadership. The third leg, 
experiential learning. All right, and I love this quote. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember, but involve me and I learn. We have learned that we can teach our students anything as long as they're involved in the lesson. So many of our classes, we challenge the students. We say, hey, you have an idea? Do it. You want a group? You, you want to do something on campus? Great, send us a proposal. What does that teach them? The discipline of developing their idea. Teaches them how to write. Teaches them how to be advocates. And it teaches them because they have to include a budget. So it starts to teach them about money. It's amazing how students that had 17s on ACTs become students with 30 on ACTs when you start talking about the things they want to do. Right? That's how you bridge that gap. We are thrilled about that and the results that we're seeing. In fact, we've blown up student life at our college. We no longer have student life. We have civic engagement, entrepreneurship, and leadership. We don't have a dean of students. We have a dean of student talent. Okay, now, I would like to tell you that the students greeted those changes with big open arms. Yeah, they just wanted to know where did they go to plan parties. All right, so we still got some work to do, all right? But that's okay. No one said it was going to be easy, and no one said that it would be perfect. So here's the new urban college model. Servant leadership, entrepreneurship, experiential learning, and that's what Paul Quinn College is now. So the grocery store we didn't have, well, we are in negotiations to build our own grocery store. No banks, we're working to create our own banking system. And we're going to invest in our students and their ideas so that they know what it's like to have people believe in them. We believe you attack the access points that people don't have. If you don't have food, well, you need access to food. If you don't have access to finance and capital, you need access to those things so you can open up those businesses. And then you need access to a quality education. All those things make an enormous difference. That's what urban colleges should be doing. We should be wading into the issues of the communities we serve because they need us. We have everything. We have all the resources. Listen, we have a small endowment. If we can do it, anyone can do it. The question is whether you want to do it, whether you want to disrupt the commonly accepted principles that people hold about what higher education should look like. Look, it's not working, right? It's not working, so why don't we try something new? The key to all of this is quite simple, and that is, look, we can do more. We can do more. Higher education can do more. Join us in doing more. Thank you.